Oh, I have that. Oh, did you? Oh, were you gonna let it fall to the ground again? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Miranda Bailey moments. You don't get to make decisions on your own without a heads up anymore. You don't say, uh, oh, maybe I'll apply to be an intern. For this list, we'll be looking at the funniest, saddest, and most iconic moments from Gray Sloan Memorial's Spunkiest Surgeon. Did your favorite Bailey moments make the cut? Sound off in the comments below. Number 10, the bulletin board. I'm proud of you all. You make me proud. You reflect on me well. Gray, if you think you can keep your clothes on long enough to follow up the labs, I'd appreciate it. No one tried harder than Dr. Bailey to stay out of the messy personal lives of her fellow surgeons, but she was the first to get involved when the drama threatened the integrity of the hospital she loved, when intern Meredith Gray and neurosurgeon Derek Shepard suddenly restarted their relationship at the end of season two, they left a little something behind. You can cover the pit, or you can you can tell me whose damn panties are on the bulletin board. Something that Derek's wife, Addison Montgomery, took upon herself to pin to the bulletin board. This prompts Bailey to ask a blunt question. Which one of you left your damn drawers on my surgical floor? That's Dr. Bailey for you, always willing to ask the questions no one else wants to. Number nine, April's maiden voyage. Find a man that's interested in fistulas and pancreasitis, and you'll find a man that's not internet dating. For all those times when Bailey seemed like the only responsible adult at Gray Sloan Memorial, no one else was more fun to watch act like a drunken fool. Ho hello, uh, do Dr. Bailey's phone. No, she is, um, she's indisposed at the moment. You pay, page someone else, thank you. A prime example is this season seven episode, when the devout Dr. April Kepner considers losing her virginity to hospital Lothario Alex Karev. Bailey, strapped to a banana bag for hangover relief, gives Kepner some very sound sailing advice. Alex Karev is not the boy you want to take your maiden voyage with. Oh, God. Her warning turns out to be exactly what Kepner needs to hear. Sometimes Sometimes the only person wiser than a sober Dr. Bailey is a drunk Dr. Bailey. Number eight, 31 flavors of wrong. You are white, but your daughter is black. Do your baby's hair. Dr. Bailey's love-hate relationship with Dr. Derek Shepard and his perfect hair has been one of the staples of Grey's Anatomy since it began in 2005. When Meredith and Derek adopted their baby girl Zola, Derek was clearly in over his head and didn't even know it. Is Meredith out sick today, or? She came in early to study with Taurus. Why? Oh, no, no reason. It wasn't until Dr. Bailey took the time to point out, in her characteristically loving but irreverent tone, that his daughter's hair was 31 flavors of wrong, that he even knew there was a problem. She was staring at you too, because daddy has nice hair. Maybe perfect hair, but for whatever reason, his daughter's hair is 31 flavors of wrong. It was a necessary reminder that even when Bailey dresses you down, she means it with love. Did you know Zola has a kitchen? Yes, Derek, I know all about Zola's kitchen. Number seven, you don't scare me. You know, they call you the Nazi. So I've heard. At Gray Sloan Memorial, the interns are the lowest of the low, and the attendings are gods, tall, handsome, and brilliant. But not to Miranda Bailey. You think you're charming and that talented, neurotic, overly moose hair sort of way good for you. But if you think I'm gonna stand back and watch while you favor her, I don't enough. favor her, she's good. When she sniffed out Derek Shepard's affair with her intern, Meredith Gray, Shepard made the mistake of trying to pull rank on her. Her iconic response, a dig at his overly moosed hair and a reminder that she's not scared of him. You know, can I point out that technically, I'm your boss. You don't scare me. Though she was a resident, caught between the top and bottom rungs of the hospital hierarchy, she did not suffer fools, no matter how powerful they were. However, the next time I see you favoring Meredith Gray in any way, I'll make sure she doesn't see the inside out of an OR for a month. Number six, Bailey's pitch for chief. I'm sure Dr. McConnell gave you an excellent presentation, Scissor. Just when it seemed like Miranda Bailey had a clear path to become the Gray Sloan Memorial's first female chief of surgery, she realized she had stiff competition in Dr. Tracy McConnell, a renowned cardiothoracic surgeon. 
forced to pitch herself to the hospital's board members, many of whom were her friends, colleagues, and even former interns, Bailey reminded them of her devotion to the hospital. This is not a stepping stone for me. I believe in this hospital and what it can do. And I want to push this bucket of bolts to do the most impossible things you have ever seen." The chief of surgery job, she said, was made for her and belonged to her. If it was hard to say no to Bailey before, watching her deliver a rousing speech while she was wrist deep in a cholecystectomy patient made it impossible. Ready to close. Number 5. Five Rules That's the Nazi? I thought the Nazi would be a guy. I thought the Nazi would be a Nazi. Maybe it's professional jealousy. Maybe she's brilliant and they call her Nazi because they're jealous. No Grays fan worth their salt could forget the first time we ever met the terrifying, no-nonsense surgical resident also known as the Nazi. I have five rules. Memorize them. Rule number one, don't bother sucking up. I already hate you. That's not gonna change. On their first day at the hospital, Bailey treated her eager and rightfully terrified interns to a well-rehearsed explanation about their place in the hospital's pecking order. That place? The bottom, of course. Your first shift starts now and last 48 hours. Her classic five rules monologue not only served to strike the fear of God into her interns, but it also set the tone for the entire show. Which brings me to rule number three. If I'm sleeping, don't wake me unless your patient is actually dying. Rule number four, the dying patient better not be dead when I get there. Not only would you have killed someone, you would have woke me for no good reason. Bailey's hardline approach to teaching and surgery would serve as a main source of conflict throughout the show's early seasons. You said five rules, that was only four. Rule number five, when I move, you move. Number four, undiscovered country. Just talk about it. Not with me, with the other one. How many times did Bailey have to say she had no interest in her colleagues' social lives? Never enough, evidently, because it was her advice the other doctors most often sought when they needed to hear the hard truths about life. That was the case for orthopedic surgeon Dr. Callie Torres in this season five episode. Hesitant about going on a date with another woman for the first time, Torres didn't know who else to turn to for advice. What if, what if I'm horrible at all that stuff? South. Order. For all her plain speaking and straightforwardness, Bailey was more comfortable using metaphors to describe this undiscovered country. The VJJ is undiscovered country. It is the motherland. You've never traveled there, you don't know its customs and ways. Number three, shooting at Seattle Grace. There is a, a situation, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but a hospital procedure dictates that when we're on a... He's on the floor. Who? The shooter. A shooter? There's a shooter in the hospital? Grey's Anatomy wouldn't be what it is without a dose of drama and tragedy. In this two-part season six storyline, a shooting event gripped the hospital, leaving many beloved characters' lives in jeopardy. After coming face to face with the shooter, Bailey cared for the wounded Dr. Percy, who needed emergency surgery if he was going to live. Mary, you're not going anywhere. Okay? That man is not coming back. I need you to pull yourself together and bring me those supplies. Trapped in one of the upper floors of the hospital, Bailey was frantic when she realized the power to the elevators had been cut. She screamed for someone to turn them back on, but to no avail. Realizing there was no chance to save Percy, Bailey did the only thing she could do. She comforted him in his last moments. But I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to be afraid. Because I am not going to leave you. Number two, Bailey gives birth. You better be lying in the street somewhere dead, mister, because when I get my hands on you, I am having your baby here, mister. They say you can separate all of time into two eras, before Dr. Miranda Bailey said the word VJJ on network television and after. In another of Grey's Anatomy's epic two-parters, a pregnant Bailey returned to Seattle Grace Hospital to give birth on the most unfortunate day ever. There's not going to be any baby born today. You hear me? I'm holding it in. An unconscious patient has a bomb in his chest cavity that could obliterate the hospital at any moment. Meanwhile, Bailey's husband, Tucker, was in a car accident and couldn't be there to help her through labor. Enter George O'Malley. The intern soon realized that even mid-childbirth, Bailey was still able to make him shake in his scrubs. It's a hilarious moment in an otherwise hair-raising episode. Oh, he's cute. O'Malley. Yeah? Stop looking at my vajayjay. 
Yes, ma'am. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. No surgeon left behind. Bailey won't leave Christina after her surgery. Dr. Bailey, you must have a surgery or two of your own today. I'm fine right here. A pep talk. Bailey gives Addison Montgomery a pep talk. The start is you can keep your knees closed in his presence. Miranda. You asked. And also, you can remember that no man, not Derek, not Mark, defines who you are. Bailey's marriage is over. Bailey talks about leaving her husband. It's not the time for new specialties. Damn. I'm sorry. I don't know it's just the first time I said it out loud. The proposal. Miranda proposes to Ben. Does this mean we're still getting married? What? What do you? I propose to you in a trench coat and a thong, proving once again that no good can ever come from a thong, but here I am, proposing again. Berating the interns, Bailey comes back from maternity leave. I've been gone two weeks, two weeks, and you ran off two residents? I've got people phoning me at home, screaming, telling me my interns are Rosemary's babies. Nobody wants you. Do you think I have time for this? I am pregnant. I'm supposed to be on bed rest. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, defending Mark. This boycott has gone on long enough. Now, okay, I have no authority here, but I would like to offer my thoughts on Dr. Sloan. You're doing great. No one gives a speech about professionalism in the workplace quite like Dr. Bailey. Perfect example, this iconic season four moment, when the nurses' union files a formal complaint against Dr. Mark Sloan for his many extracurricular activities with them, Bailey takes it upon herself to defend him. No matter how hard her exterior may seem, she's always willing to help a fellow doctor in need. It's just that when she does, she usually does it with her own unique flair. This man is a whore has always been a whore, will probably always be a whore. But I mean, that's not a secret. He's not keeping it hidden. You all knew who he was before you got involved with him. Everything Bailey stands for is on display in this moment. Her fierce friendship, her professionalism, and her very special way of being honest and hilarious in the same breath. So let us all close our knees and get back to our job so he can get back to his job and help the people that really need it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.